Good day everyone, we are the group 2 and right now, we will be conducting an interesting debate with regards to one of the most significant events that happened in our Philippine history, the root of Philippine Revolution, the Cavite Mutiny. I am Rochelle Bancocan and I will be your moderator for today. The Cavite Mutiny of 1872 was known to have resulted in the martyrdom of Conversa. And this episode led to the awakening of nationalism and eventually the outbreak of the Philippine Revolution of 1896. However, it should be noted that there are two versions of what happened. The Spanish version, as documented by Jose Montero y Vidal, and and Governor General Rafael Escuerdo, and the Philippine version as documented by Dr. Trinidad Pardo de Tavera. In this debate, we will attempt to discover what really happened and what motivated the 1872 Cavite Mutiny. Which side is true? The Philippine version or the Spanish version? Representing the Philippine version, the proposition side we have Mr. John Peter Coronel, Ms. Stacy Lou Casal, and Ms. Alia Erika de Mesa, while Mr. J. Robert Borromeo, Ms. Bea Bianca Calagos, and Ms. Casey Cepada will represent the Spanish version, the opposition side. We will be asking questions to seek the truth behind that bloody historic moment where Filipinos showed bravery to fight for their rights. But before we proceed, let us have a proper introduction in the opening of this debate. Presenting the Spanish version debaters. I'm Jay Borromeo, representative and leader of the Spanish version. I am Dayan Calaguas from the stand of the Spanish version. I, I am Casey Zapata from the stand of Spanish version. Introducing the pride of the nation, the Filipino version debaters. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Stacy Lucasa. I am the representative and leader of Filipino version. I am John Peter Coronel, representative of Filipino version. Good day everyone. I'm Alia Erika de Mesa from the stand of Filipino version. Now, let's ready for the opening statement. Good day to all. I am Stacy Lu Casal and I am the leader of the proposition team. I and the members of the proposition firmly believe that the mutiny in Cavite was just a simple mutiny of workers displeased with the Governor General Rafael Scardo's policies. But the Governor General used the mutiny to address other issues by blowing it out of proportion. Well, back then, Filipinos were required to provide services on public road construction and pay taxes every year. Those who work at the Artillery Maestranza, engineering shops, and the Cavite Arsenal, on the other hand, were exempted from this obligation since time immemorial. So without any kind of consultation, the governor issued a decree removing such old workers' retirement benefits and reclassifying them as those who work on public roads, inciting workers' rage, and prompting them to plan a mutiny. As a result, our team believes that the Cavite mutiny was merely a labor issue as it is natural for them to go on protest following the abolition of their privileges. Opposition team, the floor is yours for the rebuttal. Good day everyone, I'm Jay Borromeo and I'm the leader of the opposition team. I and the other members of the opposition team have different perspectives on the mutiny that occurred. We believe that the Cavite mutiny was not a simple mutiny as the proposition team claimed. While it is true that the removal of certain privileges triggered the Filipinos, particularly the workers at the time, the Cavite mutiny was also an attempt to overthrow the Spanish government. The abolition of privileges was not the only direct cause of the mutiny. It was also the result of the Spanish Revolution, which overthrew the secular throne, and the native clergy conspired with and supported the rebels and the enemies of Spain. It was also even suspected that the principal leaders met in the homes of the Filipino Spaniard Joaquin Pardo de Tavera or the native priest Jacinto Zamora to plan the revolution. 
and that these meetings were usually amended by the Kirit of Bakor, the soul, the soul of the movement. This conspiracy included the, the Manila garrison which was mostly made up of native soldiers, as well as a large number of civilians. The plan was for the soldiers to assassinate their officers, servant and masters, as well as the general, general's escort at Malacanang in order to dethrone the governor himself. Therefore, the Cavite mutiny was a revolution that was planned carefully. Joaquin and the Gumbursa were only suspected. How come it became a conspiracy? If it was only a suspicion, then it was not confirmed. Given the long period of time between the beginning of the Spanish colonization in the 1565 and the Cavite mutiny in 1872, the Filipinos must have harbored many grievances against the Spanish, leading to their conspiracy. The Spanish account clearly kept pointing that the mutiny was a revolution to overthrow the Spanish government. However, as revealed by the Filipino account, the Spanish, specifically Governor General Rafael Izquierdo, had a hidden motive as to why he reported to the King of Spain that the rebels wanted to overthrow the Spanish government to install a new Harry in the likes of Fathers Burgos and Zamora. According to Trinidad Pardo de Tavera, the central government in Madrid was preparing to strip the friars of their ability to influence civil affairs as well as the management and direction of educational institutions at that time. The mutiny gave the friars the opportunity they needed to justify their continued rule over the nation and this is why they sentenced the three priests to death. How can you believe that the Spanish version was telling the truth when the people who contributed to writing the account were also the Spanish who had previously abused their position of power and used it against our fellow Filipinos. Even the Spanish fires were well known to be corrupt as they could be. They sentenced anyone who disagreed with their beliefs to severe punishment or even death, and they even manipulated these so-called facts to their advantage. I couldn't agree more for such stories as of history and the realistic viewpoints of Cavite mutiny. The Spanish accounts of Jose Monter Vidal are more concise, and he had enough evidence to was supported by Gregorio and Sonia Saire. The goal of the colonizers was to bring a new economical system to state my points. The Spanish government also implemented a draconian policy in order to build a new system of living in the Philippines. Ms. Calagos just mentioned the draconian policy. Now, State your insights about the Draconian policy. Filipino version, the floor is yours. This is the reason why it all started. After the law was implemented, it really changed the vision of our ancestors. This policy was implemented by Governor Izquierdo in 1872. It was really against the Filipinos, but they are speechless. This application puts the fate of a lot of Filipinos, um, specifically the Capitanos, their miserable living abolishing the rights and privileges, replacement of the uh, position in the bleak, the paid tax. This policy brought an extensive crisis to the workers that really became the factors of the hatred and the rebellion. Spanish version will give a chance to speak about the policy. This is a systematic way of living under the Spanish government called the justice system, wherein there is a classification of people according to their talents and economic backgrounds. Now, this brought in the Philippines under the colonizers that were labeled the peninsulas by the highest rank in the society, while Filipinos are considered low-class poorers and laborers. Was the draconian policy became helpful to the Filipinos? Why or why not? Filipino version, state your opinion. To clarify my um, arguments, our ancestors did a lot of services in the arsenal. Isn't that enough to maintain their position? Our elders are forced to work because of the strict implemented laws that lead them to revolt. They only want to stand not to remove their privilege, especially in the school of arts and trades, because that's the only thing they can obtain from learning. It's very unrighteous to see someone uh, who spread the Christianity but doesn't apply the teachings to themselves. The Spanish might be knowledgeable, but they use us to take advantage to build power. This draconian policy is not for us. This is for Spanish satisfaction. 
Our stand is we need ominous workers who are physically and mentally stable for the position, not angels. The locals must contribute to the taxes as part of the agreement. This could help for the betterment of the economy. Well, I guess you wouldn't get it since angels know nothing but be informative. Always remember that we already gained favor from the Filipino priests. We implemented secularization to a much higher position in the church. Ms. Calaguas just mentioned secularization. Now, how does this connect to the Gumburza priest and to its role in the Cavite mutiny? Spanish version, it's your time to speak your arguments. Based on the account of Jose Montero y Vidal, these three priests are proven guilty as leaders to the attempt of Indians to overthrow the Spanish government. That's why fathers, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora were sentenced to be executed by the Garote in Bagumbayo. The execution is seen as a threat to all Indians and native priests who attempt to revel against the Spanish government. Now, let us hear the stand of Filipino version. The Spanish prosecutors bribed a witness to testify against the three priests. That's why they were charged with treason and sedition, which led to their death by Garote. The three who all advocated for the rights of native-born priests were falsely accused of instigating a mutiny in Cavite. They were just only fighting on unresolved issues about secularization in the Philippines that resulted in a conflict among the religious regulars and the church seculars. For the overall conclusion, the Spanish version will be first. Let your voice be heard. For the conclusion of the Spanish version, it is an attempt of the Indios to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines. The author's purpose is to report the incident headed by the native clergy and to strengthen the friars' power in such affairs. The movement became unsuccessful because of the events. A celebration of the Feast of the Lady of Loreto in Sampaloc. The event came with some fireworks display. The Cavitenius may stop this as a signal to commence to attack. So we believe that it is just a simple mutiny by native Filipino soldiers and laborers who were displeased by Izquierdo's official act of abolishing their privileges which caused the mutiny in San Felipe for Cavite. So the author's purpose is to prove the innocence of the native clergy, intellectuals, and other Filipinos and clarify what really happened and caused the mutiny. During that time, Filipino faced more hardship and cruelty as an exchange of their opposition. And that is the end of our debate. Now, you hear the both stories of the Cavita Mutiny. We will give the decision to your hand, which is more relevant and believable. But always remember to look for the primary and secondary sources for much effective criticism. Again, this is Rochelle Bonkakan your moderator for this debate. Thank you and God bless.